Welcome back, Lighting Friends. It's Rob from Pathway Connectivity Solutions. And today we're going to talk about independent timing on the Cognito Lighting Control Console. And to demonstrate that on my visualizer here, I have a ballroom that's got some cove lighting I'll show you and a band on a stage and a guy here at the podium. Uh, and on my controller, my uh, Cognito, I have some control here. So if I go to my podium front light, I could double click on him and he will come on and just to make him look good, we'll give him a backlight as well. Uh, and let's take the band, bring up their front lights and the band have blue backlights. So we can see um, their backlight coming on their front light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna record this as our first cue. So I press record on the lighting console and I call this Q1 and I use the fade time of five seconds and then we just hit done when we're happy. So now I can release that cue out, pressing go, I get a five second transition into it. Now, that's great, everything's coming on at the same time, but what happens if we wanted to break it up a little bit? We could break it out into individual cues and have one cue follow on after the other cue. So by the time you just hit the button once, the go button once, you get the entire look. Or you can use independent timing. So for instance, let's say a five second is just too subtle. What we need is we need the podium light to come up in one second. So what we do is we select the podium front light and we go to control intensity and we go to the times window. And now we see that the red wheel is the delay. I can dial in a delay or a fade time and it was five seconds the default so I'm going to make it one second then what we could do with uh, his backlight so let's go back to select and we'll get the backlight and we will say that should delay zero and also come up that's just a bit more subtle in two and for instance the band lights the backlights they can come up right away in five but let's take the front lights, make a bit more drama. And what we'll do is we'll just select the band front lights. And what we will do is we will delay them five seconds and have them fade up in five seconds. So now pressing shift and record, I can update playlist one, Q1, which is my current Q. And now if we go back to the live view and have a look at this, when we press go, we should see the podium come up first and his backlight, the band's backlights, and then ultimately the band's front lights. And that's quite a layered effect and that all happens in one cue. And if you look closely here, you can see that the band front lights delayed five and faded in five. That's showing the independent times that are applied to that. Now, if you go and look in the playlist, you'll actually also see here a little green clock saying some of the lights, at least in that queue, are using independent time. So uh, if you're interested, you might want to remove independent timing from, let's just say the uh, podium backlight. If we go into control times, we can just say use queue time and then it shows here that number 38 is captured. We need to update the current queue. And then when we play it again, and we look at this, the podium backlight doesn't have an independent time. It actually happens in queue time. So if I change the queue time from five seconds to whatever time I want, um, by pressing the edit key, I could uh, roll in the fade time to 10 seconds. And then anybody who is using Q time, in this case, number 38, will actually fade in the Q time of eight seconds. Now, how can you use this to be a lot more um, interesting and add dynamic when you have much larger rigs? Now, for instance, here, I have a cove along the back here that is currently dark. If I grab the rear cove, and I throw them to full. They come on in, in white. And I may choose them to go into a color. 
make them blue to match the blue backlights. Now, the interesting thing here is we can take the selection order that was used. So those are all of the lights there. I can zoom out and see there's pages of these lights. There's 52 of them that go along the back there. What I can do is I can go into intensity times and say use a fan timing. So the selection order that I chose I can say, okay, the first one will not delay at all, and the last one will delay five seconds, and in general, I want them all to fade in one second. So if I record this as the next cue, I'll just press record, and the go button, and that records it to the next cue. I back up a cue. So here I am in Q1, and if I go now into Q2, watch the cove and it grows from stage left to stage right in the order in which I picked. Now, selection order, you could do some clever things with selection order. So if I look uh, at the beginning here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select none. I'm gonna select the first, well, hang on, first of all, I'm going to grab my group of my rear cove and I'm going to change the color to something dramatic. Uh, let's use a yellow. So that's pretty dramatic. <clears throat> now, I'm going to select the first one, and I'm going to go to the halfway mark, which is about 91 or 92. And I'm going to add a delayed time for the color. So now I'm in control color time. You can tell because I have a purple clock. And I'm going to say fan the delays. The first one's not going to delay. The last one's going to delay three seconds. And I'm going to have them snap to that color. Now we will go and select the last one up to the middle. That's 116 to, to 92. And do the same sort of fanning. And now, if I record this as the next cue, let's have a look at it. So there we are in blue, and then we're gonna do a go to yellow, and it meets in the middle. So you saw that the selection order mattered a great deal when I chose from the ends towards the center. So one of the other things we can do is we can select the entire group of the rear cove, and then I can go into the tools selection here and I have these dynamic tools one of them is to randomize the order so all that's done is it just jiggled it up so it's like I touched each one of them in a random order and I touched all of them so let's change colors and we will go to let's say a golden amber and on the times we're going to fan the times the first one and the last one, and we'll give them all a fade time of, well, this will be interesting. Let's make the first one fade in three seconds and the last one fade in one. So that means the first one's gonna delay zero, but fade in three, and the last one's gonna delay three and fade in zero. And if we record this as a cue, what's that gonna look like in the random order? So here we go on the queue. Now there's other uses for using independent timing. And this time I'm gonna show it with some moving lights. So I have a group of moving lights here. I am going to take them to full. So I go to intensity and uh, I roll up their intensity. I will go into position, put them up on the back wall. Now this is where I like using my fanning so if I go fan center and I take the pan and I fan it that spreads them out along the back wall and then I can go into my um, uh, shape controls here and if I touch lens I can zoom these out a wee bit okay that looks cool so that's just a wash on the back wall now let me show you what I can do if I add a gobo and I make the gobos 
spin the wheel. But what I do is I go on the time and I fan the timing so that the first light in the group, the first light will delay zero. The last light in the group of 11, the last light will delay two seconds. And rolling the blue wheel down and the green wheel down, I make everybody go in a zero second fade. Now if I record that as my next cue, that kind of looks fun when you start an animation happening, but you delay the time in which they go. So three, two, one, go. So now it looks like the gobo is going from one side of the stage to the other. So this is uh, some of the very powerful things you can do with independent time, uh, taking any family, color, position, shape, or intensity, and giving any single light its own delay and fade time, or fanning it through the selection group.